If I right click on the contour mill operation of this pocket and select Edit Definition, you will see that the dialog box appears almost exactly the same as the roughing operation parameter. The main difference is that there's a contour tab instead of the rough tab and the addition of the lead in tab. Let's begin with the contour tab. A lot of these options are similar to what we've covered in the roughing tab. For the side parameters, you can specify an allowance for how much material you want to leave behind for subsequent operations. If I click on the Settings button, CamWorks opens the Side Parameters dialog box where you can type in the amount you want to cut on each pass, the final cut amount, and finally, you can put in extra spring passes if you want to account for any tool deflection that may occur. The Corners button will open up the Corner Parameters window. Here, I have the option to use sharp, looped, or rounded corners for the contour operation that's being adjusted. I can set the internal and external corner styles independently here. Since this is a filleted pocket, there's no need to use it for this example. Here in the corner machining section, if this option is checked, the contour operation will only take place on corners between the maximum and minimum radius you type in here. If I type in 30 thousandths and an eighth inch for my range and click Preview, you see that the contour operation only takes place in the corners since they fall within the range I specified. This can be helpful when you need to insert additional contour operations to clean up tight corners rather than using a very small tool to complete an entire contour step. If you're adjusting a contour operation on a feature with a chamfer, you can use these settings here to control the length of the chamfer and an offset distance that the tool will protrude to give it a nice smooth finish. The depth parameter and depth processing options you see here are the same options we covered in the roughing tab. Here at the bottom, there's the bottom finish option. With this option selected, CamWorks actually adds a bottom finish toolpath to the operation and I can specify the toolpath pattern and step over amount as well as if I want an extra perimeter pass. Here on the NC tab I have the same options as a roughing operation. However, I did not explain the operations for CNC and toolpath compensation before. These operations control how the NC code will be output in terms of where the center of your tool will be in relation to the part feature you are machining. In other words, the machine wants to know if CNC data that's being transmitted represents the center line of the toolpath or the edge of the feature you're machining. This determines if the machine or CamWorks compensates for the tool radius. If you have CNC compensation turned on, then the cutter radius compensation is activated at the start of the lead-in line. For example, you will get a G41 or G42 code in your part program for the current operation. If you have the width compensation option checked, then CamWorks will compensate and offset the radius by the width of the tool. Here on the lead-in tab, we have a few options for how you want the tool to lead into the surface that's being finished. When I select the different options from the drop-down, you see a preview of what the lead-in looks like. For the lead-in lead-out point, I can simply click on edges of the feature to determine which edge will be used for the midpoint. If I use the start point option, the lead-in will occur at the end of the line I select and I can offset it from that point by using this spin box. Down in this area, I can adjust the parameters of the lead-in, which are identified here in this diagram. 
On the Advanced tab, there are a few options for how contour operations will deal with avoid areas. I'll explain these options later in the section called Inserting Avoid Areas.